What a day, a terrific Thursday, or some people like to call it a Friday Eve. Oh, that's good, I like yeah. that. I like that, it's just so much happening today. I was sitting up and I'm just going, I'm on my social media, because you know when you get up, you press that alarm clock and you just don't feel like getting up, but then you pick up the phone and you hit, you go to your Instagram and you go to Facebook, <laughs> just procrastinating on everything you gotta do. But I was on social media and I was reading that Blake Lively revealed she just reached another mommy milestone. So Blake Lively, um, and by the way, we was in acting class together, I ever tell you that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, her father, Eric Lively, was my acting coach, and then she used to come in sometimes. You're like, always connected to people <laughs> in the most random way. I know, like they would come in, it was the Lively family, and her father was my acting coach, and she'd come in and, and do everything, and so, I, yeah, I, it just came to me like a rant, that's when I procrastinate, the things just come <laughs> to me. But Blake, she is the mom of four, and uh, she says, going to the Super Bowl with Taylor Swift was the first time she had ever left her kids. Oh. Now, I, well, isn't that something? Okay, when she said the first time, first of all, her oldest is nine. It's been nine years? You ain't left your child in nine daggone years? Oh my gosh. Then the second one is seven. You haven't left your child in seven years? Then the next two that I can understand. So nine, seven, four, and one. And Blake was able to let loose. Now she wore some pants that were shoes. You know those pants that are connected to your shoes? Um, the shoe pants, what do you call them, shants? Shoe <laughs> pants, shoes and pants, shants? I don't like that word. So she wore borrowed jewelry and she went clubbing. So see, this is what I call the whole, she got on 19 bracelets that you can't wear with a four year old because you smack them in the face. <laughs> but this is really the Taylor Swift effect, which is you just drop everything you got going on and you go where Taylor wants you to go, okay? <laughs> And I, let me tell you something, if Taylor Swift asked me to go to Belize, Dubai, Bermuda, <laughs> shoot, if Taylor Swift... <laughs> let me tell you something, I don't care if Taylor Swift asked me to go to Rhode Island, I would be gone. <laughs> Jeffrey would be like, when is my mama coming home? Because that's exactly what he would be telling 911. He'd be telling 911, Taylor Swift called, my mama left, I ain't seen her since. <laughs> So that's what it sounds like Blake Lively did. She just left. You know, and I'm going, I, did Ryan Reynolds even know that she was gone? She, Taylor Swift called, I don't even think, cause you know, she was with Ice Spice. I don't even know if Blake Lively knew Ice Spice. I just think when the van pulled up, she jumped in it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Blake, what's your name? Ice, come on! <laughs> But I gotta tell you something. When you go out, still clap if you have children. Clap, okay, then you know. There's something about it, even when you go out, your mommy brain does not turn off. It just, no, and no matter how old your child gets, your mommy brain, your mom brain, or it becomes mom. Like, literally, Jeffrey is in LA right now, and I text him nonstop. I miss him so much, I send him three baby pictures, okay? <laughs> He texted me back. He just, he texted me back all in cap letters. It said, enough, ma, enough. <laughs> like, even when he was, no matter what, I just need to know what's going on. He's with his dad right now, who loves him as much as I do, but I don't, I need to hear my son's voice. Like, my ex-husband was like, I need you to stop calling. 
<laughs> and I said, just put the phone by him. He don't need to know. Just put the phone. I need to, I need to make sure my son is just still there. So I'm, I can literally, I know that Blake Lively was probably in the middle of that Super Bowl game, and it was like, touchdown! And she said, Ryan, did he eat? Did they eat? <laughs> Because you, you, you be texting, did you change the baby's diaper? What time did they wake up? You know you gotta warm the bottles to exactly 86 degrees? Exactly. You know the nine-year-old, she likes Paw Patrol. You got it on Paw Patrol. Because you, as a, you know, your kids are just a part of you. But here's the thing, I know Blake, though, I bet you when she got to that club, she probably lost her ever-loving mind. She ain't been out nine years. Look at it, it's been nine years since she been out left them babies. She's showing her belly, everything. You get to that club with Taylor Swift, she probably felt single all over again because she was with... And you go out with Taylor Swift, like, you going out on a different level of clubbing and a ladies' night out. You are with Super Bowl winners. winners. You are with all of those hunky men who just... They got all of that testosterone. They done just won the Super Bowl. D them men was probably picking up women, swinging them around. <laughs> just to... Just, oh! <laughs> just, you know, Super Bowl winners... They got their stink still. They got their stink under their arms. Ah! And they probably swinging the women around. They probably accidentally kissed somebody. I mean, that's my fantasy. I don't know about y'all. That's just my fantasy. But she had the cute outfit on. And I know when Blake, when she got to the after party, she was like, look, Ryan, you're not gonna see me for a minute. I'm gone. She was not thinking about no baby bottles. She was thinking about champagne bottles. That's what it was. So Blake, I'm glad you enjoyed your ladies' night out. I really am, because it's not gonna happen for another five years. <laughs> but every mommy, we deserve to go out and just live a little. That's what it is. Just live a little. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, this show, I watched it the first, the first season. I'm gonna have to watch it this season. Clap if you watch that Netflix, that hit show, Love is Blind. Clap if you watch Love is Blind. Okay. I really gotta watch it, because it's back for season six now, okay? And this is a show, Love is Blind, where couples date and they get engaged before they even see each other. So, and then you made me watch this the first season. Oh, Blind, yeah. And I couldn't stop watching it, so we gotta watch it this season. So, in the newest episodes, the newly engaged couples are getting to know each other. Now, you got A.D. and her fiancé, Clay. They were enjoying lunch when she made a shocking discovery about him, because you don't know them. He eats his soup like a kid. Um, take a look. Good. Locked in. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I'm glad you're loving it. I'm glad you're loving it. Okay, she was laughing, but I give her 30 days and she gonna be like, uh-uh, okay, stop. Stop. I, you see how she was like, she, she laughed, <laughs> and then she went, I'm glad you're loving it. I'm, that smile dropped. Let me tell you something. That laughter is only gonna, only gonna last for about a minute because of the newness of everything. Everything is cute, but it was that shocked kind of laughter. It was that ner <laughs> <laughs> Like that nervous laughter, like, is this really happening in front of my eyes? After a while, she's gonna get irritated, okay? Because she's gonna be like, you gonna, you, you gonna put that bowl in your mouth the whole time? That is going to start getting on her nerves. Cause clap if it got on your nerves when you first saw it. I'm literally... I'm watching this and I'm getting mad because men can get away with eating like this, but women, we can't. You go on a date with a man, the first thing you start licking the rib juice off your fingers... <laughs> And they look at you like you have no home training. That's the way they look. They, they don't want to date you no more. But this, when I was watching it, I thought, okay, he slurps. I did not think he was gonna pick up the bowl and drink from the bowl. I might have been able to take the slurping from the spoon, but that bowl in his mouth, it looks like he, left, he never left that third grade. Like, it was just... And, I, and, and then I would have been like, and we had a resort in front of everybody. You know, and I look at it and I go, I gotta talk to his mama, cause that... <laughs> And this is... I'm gonna show this to Jeffrey. This is why I'm on Jeffrey so hard. He always goes, why you keep getting on me? I gotta say thank you. I gotta say this. Because I don't ever want a woman to look at him and say, who is your mother? 
Did she not train you? Cause this right here, I go, what in the world was your mother doing? This looks bad for his mother because right here, that's home training, right there. What, the first time that boy picked up a bowl and did that, his mama should have been on him like white on rice. Cause if a, I'm telling you, cause it starts with this stuff. If this guy is picking, AD is picking up his bowl like this, John, and he's slurping his drink out of the bowl, I bet you he's drinking the milk out the carton from the refrigerator. <laughs> Well, I can't stand that. I, I don't drink the milk out of the carton like that, but when you finish your cereal, every guy drinks the cereal milk like that. For real? Even Rambo the cameraman is clapping and encouraging me behind you. The cameraman did it. Marco, do you slurp out the bowl like that too? I mean, on, on occasion. What? It's not that bad. What? It's what we do, Chef. It's not that bad. Oh my God, I feel like I am, what? I am hor- I want to talk to everybody's mama. I'm horrified. I feel like I'm learning something. Men, who, men, clap if you drink out the boat. Oh my gosh. OG. Oh my gosh, I literally, okay, you know what? I know y'all, if you slurping out the boat, you don't clip your toenails. I know all of you. I know you don't clip your toenails. That's, that's going too far. I, yeah, exactly. I see one man shaking his head, yeah. All of you, I'm so shocked right now because y'all probably sit on your bed with your outside clothes on. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. I, I'm, I, I literally am in, in the throes of hor horror right now <laughs> that y'all slurp out of a bowl. Um, well, I'm just gonna say this. I wish AD and her, her good luck. I'm saying I don't think this is gonna work out, that bowl thing, but maybe since all the guys do it. Oh my, you think Lenny Kravitz slurps out his bowl? Yeah. When, 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 he, when he gets here, you can ask him, Sherry. Marco, you think he's, you said he's... I believe he does. I believe he does. Okay, well, I, I was, I got a, so many levels of what I was gonna say. I'm not going to, because <laughs> this is a daytime talk show. I'm gonna move on. All right, y'all. <laughs> I'm horrified. So y'all, Vanderpump Rules star Tom Sandoval uh, is revealing what happened after his then girlfriend Ariana Maddox caught him cheating. Now y'all remember Tom cheated on Ariana with her best friend Rachel. All right, that's what happened. So Tom gave an interview to the New York Times and he said that when Ariana found out that he was cheating, he said she beat my ass. <laughs> okay, I'm not. Now he says. Look at, look at the women, look at the women, all the men is just like this. Okay, where, where? Now, he says that Ariana split his lip and ripped his chain off. Okay, now, here's the, here's the thing, y'all. Lots of people say violence is never the answer. I'm not one of those people. Um, <laughs> let me tell you something. As a former cheat e, as a former cheat e, that's the one who got cheated on, right? Uh -huh. As a former cheat e, uh, when somebody cheats on you, when when somebody cheats on you, there's a rage that goes through your body, especially if you find out like a woman has been in your stuff, in your bed, in your home. You so you find out your man is cheating, and there's this thing that just this anger, and you feel like like I could run over somebody, or I could hurt you, like. And so I'm not saying that violence is the way to go because if you go that way, it always is gonna end up with you calling your best friend or your mama saying, can you come get me? <laughs> so it's not the way. Here's what I think. It's not, don't, don't be violent. Don't hurt him. Hurt the things that he loves. <laughs> like, you know, to a man, key up his car. Key, key up his car. Look, take a fork to his doggone tires. Y'all want to make a man tear up his good clothes. That's what you do. You want to, you know, get, here's the thing. You really want to make a man curl up in a fetal position with tears running down his eyes? Take just one Air Jordan. Take only one of his shoes. Don't take them both. Just take one so he doesn't have the matching one. I'm telling you, he will be curled up in a ball clutching that one shoe if you just take one. You want to make him cry? Take one of the controllers to his Xbox or his PS5. Matter of fact, just take a bat to the whole Xbox. 
You want to you wanna make a man cry? Let me tell you, besides slurping out a bowl, rip up their favorite underwear. Marco, I know you got some drawers you like. I'm telling you. Yes, you do. Rip up the underwear. Cut holes in the pockets of his draw. pants. Stuff just falling out. And I, I could go on, but in case law enforcement is watching, <laughs> I am just kidding. These are jokes for entertainment purposes. <laughs> just even as I was saying it, I sensed a subpoena being served on me. <laughs> from one of the exes. Oh, my, because now they got evidence. I didn't say it. Statue of limitations is Statue, still open. It's, yeah, it is still open <laughs> on 1A. All right, so singer Monica is shutting down rumors about getting plastic surgery. So Monica was performing for fans, and uh, everybody thought Monica looked a little curvier than usual. So this video of her on stage went viral with people speculating that Monica had a Brazilian butt lift, or as the kids like to say, a BBL. So Monica jumped online to set the record straight and credit Spanx for giving her, her, her uh, curves. Take a look. For me, a BBL would mean bought by Linda because that's all I got. Let me show y'all what I got. Watch it. <laughs> this, this is what this girl got. <laughs> and this girl. Spanx. Mama don't play. And listen, no shame in what I do. If I do something, I will be the first to tell you. I mean, look at my love life. It was in shambles and I told y'all. Okay, when I saw the original video, I was thinking, who did Monica go to? For I'm so glad you cleared that up, Monica, because I kept looking at it. But you, you Monica, you should have heard the meetings in our rooms over here, because we kept playing your video over and over, because I was like, it's so curvilicious, I couldn't figure out. But I have to say this, Monica, I am not hating on you because I know what you are going through. I have always had big boobs, but no butt. So I tried on some booty pads. Uh, it didn't go so well when I put the booty pads on. <laughs> Y'all look when I tried my booty pads on. Oh my so God. So I put the hips on. I don't really like it because it's too big, but I guess if I was to do an Instagram pose like that, then it would look good. If I was to do Instagram, it would look good. This is the booty pads. I do like the booty. I think the booty is great. So when you're walking away from you, so but if I'm dancing to you on Instagram, oh, it look good. It look good. Okay. Let me tell you something. I forgot they were hip pads as well. So it was hip pads and booty pads. It looked crazy as hell because it didn't match. It was sticking out. It was horrible. And I thought, and here's the thing, when you wear them, you'd be thinking you look cute. I went out with my team and one of the booty pads kept falling down to my thigh. <laughs> So I had to keep going to the bathroom, then one of the booty pads had flipped inside of the stuff. And I'm, so one, one cheek looked like a balloon and the other cheek looked inverted. Like it just, and I kept walking and, fit, and the hip pad was sliding. It looked like I had a big knee cause it had slid down. So the verdict from everybody was sharing no more booty pads cause it didn't look good. But I would say to Monica, Monica, you got such a cute figure. All you gotta do, and I promise you, take you 30 days. If you go to the gym and work out those glute muscles, you won't need the booty pads. I am telling you, girl, if you go and do dead, some dead lifts and you lift and you stick out your butts and some squats and lunges, and there's a thing that you do, you put the weight of the bar on and you lift up and tighten up your butt. Now, you may not have that booty that looks like you can put a drink on it but you're gonna develop a cute butt for your shape. And I would say this, cause if you want one, but Monica, we love your voice so much. I, I couldn't concentrate with the pads, but your voice is so good. I'm not even worried about your booty. I'm telling you. That's how much I love Monica. But sometimes, you know, you, it's just, it, the booty pack, I know it might've been just one of them days that a girl goes through. I, I, I understand. One of them days, Sharon. <laughs> I see what you did When there. I'm happy inside. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Don't wanna pay that. Y'all, we got a great show for you today. <laughs> Later on, I'm so excited about this. My Best Life series continues with Tamsin Fidel. We talking menopause, menopause. 
But up next, legendary singer Darlene Love is here. <laughs> Jerry will be right back. singer who has captivated us for decades. David Letterman crowns her the Christmas queen. Bruce Springsteen calls her his forever crush. And Rolling Stone says she's one of the greatest singers of all time. Please welcome the iconic Darlene Love. <laughs> I'm so honored that you are here because I am a huge fan of yours. Girl. No, no, no. I'm a huge fan. Oh, man. <laughs> no, there is an outfit you had on the other day. It was a colorful thing and oh, this no shoulder. Oh, that's Bruce Blair. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I said was... she is wearing that. Now, is that something, is that something you wear? Because I'm going to get it for you. Is that something that you would wear? <laughs> yes, honey. OK, well, all right then. <laughs> We're going to have that wrapped in a, in a big bow, delivered to your house. Okay. When I tell you, I, I just, I love you so much. And I watched your Oscar-winning documentary, 20 Feet from Stardom. If you've never seen that, please get it. You can, you can, it's on streaming right now. And it is about the lives of backup singers. Yes. And you were featured all throughout that, that documentary. Now, it inspired me so much because in it, you went from successful singer to cleaning houses. Yes. How did that happen? When I decided I didn't want to be with the girl group anymore. Okay. Uh, I worked for Dionne Warwick for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I worked for Tom Jones. I worked for all of those wonderful people and they treated me royally, but I wanted to have my own thing. When I came back, nobody would hire me because mm. my records were under the name of somebody else. Wow. Phil would do that, you know, even like- oh, Phil Spector. You Phil Spector, about, yeah. sorry. And uh, so they didn't really know me as Darlene Love. Some, I actually, when I came to New York, I think they thought I was a figment of Phil's imagination. Really? Maybe it was one of the Ronettes or one of the Crystals or whatever. So I couldn't find a job. Uh, everybody that I had worked with had moved on. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have anybody in that, those positions anymore. Right. So I started cleaning houses. My mother cleaned houses, my grandmother cleaned a little bit. I can get a job. Yeah. My whole thing was I had two boys to keep me and the boys comfortable yes, so we can yes. work. I say, huh, you know, I can clean a house, honey. Okay. I can clean All better right. than anybody I know. It was okay. one of them white gloves clean. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. So I started working for this lady, and after I'd been there a couple of months, it was Christmas time. Yeah. And Christmas Baby Please Come Home was playing on the radio. Really? But it was like coming down the hallway. Okay. And I heard it, and I was cleaning this bathroom, and I looked in the mirror, and I went, okay, Father, I hear you. I am supposed to be doing the gift that you have given that me, you've given to I want to share it. And so you came back strong. It's amazing when those doors open for you when you release and let when go. When God opens them, nobody, nobody can, can close them. <laughs> when I tell you, when I tell you. And it's so funny because that very song that you heard that you knew you were supposed to come back, Christmas Baby Please Come Home, Cher sang backup for you on that song. Okay, and then, <laughs> but just full circle. Full circle. You reunited with Cher for her new Christmas album. Yes. Like, literally, were you surprised that Cher called you up? I was, because when we see each other, it's like old times. Right. And we just hang out and we talk and all this. So I get this phone call from her. She says, hey, doll. I said, yeah. She said, this is Cher. I said, who? Uh <laughs> I even looked at the phone. And uh -huh. then she said, Cher, bitch. Oh! <laughs> Cher, you knew it was Cher, huh, when she said that. Like, I would think that Cher, because we talk about Cher a lot on, on our Hot Topics, I would think that Cher, like, you could have a sleepover at her mansion and it would be so much fun. Have you ever done that? I did that right after they did the album. Really? The Christmas album. So she, she everything is last minute with Cher. Yeah. 
They think of doing something and then she'll change her mind and do something else. Okay. She can afford to do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely, she can. <laughs> like, when y'all just sit, like, just, just be in there, you just talk about everything and share, like... Everything. Really? But we, we try to catch up. Okay. Because when I first started recording, Cher had never been in a recording studio before. She was dating Sonny Bono. Wow, that's what and she was... And Sonny worked for Phil Spector. Right. And one day I was late, uh, late getting there, and, and Phil says to Sonny, Sonny, didn't you tell me your girlfriend could sing? Ah. She said, yeah, well, tell her to come in here. I want to put some oohs and ahs on this record. And it was Christmas, baby, please come home. Wow. That's, that is amazing. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> now, you, you recently were honored with a platinum record, yes. all right? And so... What... <laughs> now, Bruce Springsteen came and he presented it to you. Were people shocked that Bruce, that Bruce Springsteen has showed up to present this? Number one, they said, well, who can we get to present this to right. you? I said, you need to call Bruce, honey. He'll uh, do it. Just Bruce, uh-huh. We have a thing. <laughs> Not a thing thing, <laughs> but a thing. A <laughs> thing. And uh, they said, we can't call Bruce. I don't think he would do anything like this. I said, well, the only thing he can do is say no. Right. Then you move to the next person. Exactly. He said yes right away. He when, said yes. When you want me to do it, when you want me to do it. Oh and the only thing about it, I couldn't tell anybody. And you couldn't say anything. He just had to. He just. He had to. He has to show up because when he shows up, everybody comes out of the cracks. Yes. And they give him a guitar and he sings. And he got to sing. See, that's the only thing we have to tell you, Miss Love. You okay. can't mention that he's coming. I so, love it. So, Sherry. Uh huh. I said somebody special is coming out on the stage. Right. Uh, and I said, Bruce, before I could get sting out of my mouth. I thought I, Jesus had arrived. When he came out, Bruce Springsteen, and look at him and gave you that. You yes. got so many, like, this is what I love about you, darling, because you have so many stories. This is what, okay, is it true that Elvis tried to shoot his shot with you? <laughs> what? Because you were background, be, uh, with the, he was behind there with Elvis. All right, look at you, okay? So, like, <laughs> is it true? I did a movie with Elvis after we did the 1968 comeback special. Oh, wow. Then I did a movie with him called Change of Habits. Okay. And we broke for lunch. Uh -huh. So everybody kind of goes their way when you break for lunch. Yes. If it's not catered. Exactly. And uh, I had left my sunglasses in my uh, boot in the, tra uh, the trailer. Right. And I was coming back, back by myself, and uh, Elvis stepped out of his wagon. He went, Miss Love. And I went, yeah, what's up? He said, Come here, I want to say something to you. Uh-huh. And I said, okay. <laughs> maybe he loves gospel music. I thought maybe that's what he wanted. Right. Do some more uh -huh. singing. Uh-huh. <laughs> you thought he wanted a little bit of... <laughs> you thought he wanted a little bit of Jesus, huh? Uh -huh. And so what happened? What happened was he said that he was from the old school. He said, what I'm thinking right now, would my grandmother or grandfather would turn over in their grave. Oh, my God. I didn't ask him what he said, because he's, he's from the South. Right, right. You know how that is. OK. So I didn't say anything about it. He said, well, you know what I'm thinking about? I, I would really, you know, like to... It'll be my first time. Oh, with a black woman. He said, with a he, with, with black woman. It's in the book. You said this, this <laughs> book is fascinating. So he the said he wanted to be with a black when woman. When he said that, I said, well, I ain't gonna be the first. Oh! <laughs> oh! So, After that, we got along so good. But you never wanted to, like, you never wanted to no, with Elvis? I, I kinda... was kind of, like, afraid. Uh, it was that kind of thing. Do you really want to get into this? Oh, my God. Do you want to go here? <laughs> oh, no, but I mean, I'd have been like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's when you say, uh-huh, as you get in trouble. It's when you get in trouble. <laughs> so, oh, my... Your book is so absolutely amazing <laughs> with the stories that you have. But it's so funny, because you were single, and then you found love with your husband, uh, Alton. Yes. Y'all were on a cruise ship together. Let me tell you something. Like... <laughs> was you were on a cruise ship, so was it like the love boat when you... It was, but see, that was my first job. Let me tell you how I got my first job. Uh -huh. I took my records, my bio, my everything, and went yes. down to the cruise line. Really? It was in San Diego is where the ships landed. I didn't know what I was doing. I was following God. If you follow him, it'll be okay. <laughs> Don't try to get in front of him. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And they said, well, nobody's ever got on a ship like this, but I didn't know they knew who I was. Right. That was always my surprise. They said, why do you want to work on our ship? I said, because I need a job, honey. Okay. I got... I can't tell you the whole story, but I ended up getting the job. Alton, my husband, was the chief steward. Okay. 
And he would, ooh. <laughs> Y'all know about Chief Sue? All right. <laughs> and we would, I, my shows were late at night, and he worked, his job was working at night. Yes. So he would come to see my shows all the time. And they have on these white, beautiful suits. Oh, my goodness. And I used to say, where's that man at that's always here watching the show, and then when the show is over, he's gone. But this is what I love about y'all. Y'all have been together. You are celebrating your 40th wedding anniversary. Your 40th... This, this June. This June. And this is like the wind beneath your wings. This is your rock oh, over here. My rock, honey. Oh, my goodness. And he never comes out. Like, this is the first time I've seen him. I know. Nobody ever seems him. It's almost like me and Dolly Parton. You don't know what her husband looked like. I... <laughs> and that's the way you do it. Darlene, Don't you know the secret is to... What's the secret sauce? Tell the me. The secret sauce between us, I'm Darlene Love on the road. Okay. I'm Darlene Allison at home. Oh, so you leave the boss at home. Ah, that's what I got out of work on. <laughs> I gotta stop telling men. I'm Sherry Shepard. You better... No, 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 no. I used to do that. Okay, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> the, the, what is the name of your book? What is the name of your book? My Name is Love. My Name is Love. Okay, because I'm telling you, Darlene, I want to thank you for being here. Y'all got to see, okay? Go see Darlene Love at the Bergen Performing Arts Center in Inglewood, New Jersey on April 14th. Get My Name is Love, y'all. And please watch 20 Feet from Stardom. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Darlene Love! Up next, we're talking everything menopause with Emmy-winning journalist Hanson Fidel. Don't miss it. This is Darlene Love. We'll be right back. Did you know that there's an estimated 20 million women either going through menopause or they're showing signs leading up to it? So here to get real about <laughs> menopause is Emmy Award-winning journalist and menopause advocate, Tamson Fidel. <laughs> Tamson! First of all, girl, I'm so glad you're here. Okay, now most women, that they are afraid of menopause, okay? Now you say that we gotta change our, men our mindset about menopause. Yeah, we have to, because when we hear menopause, we hear old, invisible, not relevant. That is not the case. These women are thriving. We have women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s doing yeah. amazing, amazing things. Absolutely. That mindset has to change. It's not the mindset that I'm thriving. It's when I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm panting and I'm hot here and I'm cold there and I'm walking. So I hear you changing the mindset. Yeah. No, so Tamson, people are learning about menopause through social yeah. media. Why do you think menopause is trending so much? Well, listen to this. I, I was so shocked when I heard this. One billion women are going to be in menopause globally by the year 2025. A billion women. So we kind of rule the world right now. Oh, all so right. that's why you're hearing about it everywhere. Oh, my goodness. So it's just like I, I'm just reading about it everywhere. Yeah. And, and I, I'm glad you're here uh, because I just want to get real about menopause, right, okay? Can we just, like, talk? Let's talk. Okay, good. Let's now, be honest. I want to talk about... Now, menopause comes with certain things. I know changing your mindset, but now that we're getting more seasoned, we're getting older, dating can be a little tricky because our body is going through changes, i.e., I don't even want none and I need it back. I, I know. Need so, like, how do you handle that? I know. It's like, where's my libido going? Like, my, where, yeah. where is it? Like, in my mind, I'm horny as heck, but, but my then, body's not no, following my mind. Nothing else is happening, Nothing right? else is happening. You know, you've, you've got to be honest with yourself about yeah. your body and where it's at and right. what you need to do. Know your body. And it's really hard, especially when we're talking about dating, because you've got to be honest yeah. with yourself and honest with the person you're dating. And if you yeah. can't do that, that's a problem, right? You've got to tell the person, like, look, this is this is what I'm going through right now. I've got hot flashes. I'm sweating. I have low libido. I got br I got brain fog. I don't even remember what you want me you to are. tell Lenny Kravitz all of that. You want me to say <laughs> all of that yes. to Lenny Kravitz? You have to. Oh, Lenny, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm supposed to tell Lenny, Lenny, I'm going through it. It's not you, it's me. I'm just going through it. I'm good. good. The Flash and sometimes I don't want pass, to. Lenny. This man just ran around butt naked <laughs> in the forest. <laughs> Girl, okay, so if I'm supposed to tell him this, then you got to, how do you re, what are some tips on like reigniting yeah. the romance spark during menopause? Well, I got to tell you something, you know, I got remarried at 50 years old. I was like the You better go on stop now. I was like the menopausal guy. But I, I wrote a letter 
to my uh, soon-to-be husband about what was going on because I was a different girl from the person you that was dating. Letter. I had to. I wrote him a letter to tell him what was going on with me because it was hard to articulate. It was hard to articulate. Okay. It's not. It's not you. It's me. I'm going through these changes with my body. This is not the body I recognize. But I want you to know I love you and I want to be with you. But you got to be patient with me. So did you leave this? Did he get this after he came out the shower and got in the bed and <laughs> there was a letter sitting there on the pillow? On the pillow. On the pillow. Really? No. I no. I I gave it to him. I did because so that, it was hard to talk about. It's hard to articulate what's going on in our bodies. Okay, so I gotta, all right, so. I'm gonna help you with your letter, letter Lenny letter. No, I'm gonna write that one. <laughs> that letter is going to Trevor, no. Okay, okay I'm just. <laughs> you said, shoot, look, I'm telling you. Yeah, okay. All right, so we, I got, Trevor. The, I got the dating thing with the, in the romance thing with menopause. Can we talk about menopause at work? Yes. All right, what do yes. we do when we're at work and suddenly get a hot flash in a meeting or while you're sitting in a chair doing hot topics. You know, I just, what do well, you Well, that's do? a good time for it. I, I think that's a good time for it during the hot topics. Uh -huh. um, I, yeah, I gotta tell you something. I talked to a woman, woman recently and said, I wanted to rip off my shirt in a meeting. Like, I was so hot, hot. Because it was coming, like, from my hair. It was coming up through my body. Yes. So, you know, I think you've gotta be open to normalize this conversation. There, there's okay. nothing we can do without being really open about this. And the fact you're doing this here and talking about it in men here All in this the conversation. Time. Yes. Because I know we have some men on this show that are big advocates of it. Yes. And I think that's a really big deal. Um, I carry a neck fan with me, too, you, by the way. Yeah, I, 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 I brought you one here. And oh, this so the neck fan. My neck. This is so Put good. This on and just feel it. And you can feel the air, Do you like, feel hitting that? your neck. Ooh, yeah. good, yes. And I carry this. And the vibration me. feel good, too. I, so, <laughs> two things. Serves a double purpose. It's supposed to be for your neck, but you can do anything you I want love with the chair. Oh my gosh, I love it. Because here's the thing this is why it's so cold on the set. Because when I'm hot I hear flashing, you. everybody, I, I know it. the audience is like freezing, but I get a hot flash and I tell everybody, I, is it like I'm sitting there and I can't breathe and I'm sweating in my I, my wig and I can feel uh, all like, of that. So uh, crazy. Who, who hasn't had a hot flash though? And you feel, if you're in a menopause middle. or perimenopause, you, you feel that. And there's another thing to do at work. You know, there are a lot of workplaces doing policy right now, and I think that's really an awesome thing. So women yeah. are not afraid to go into their HR department and say, look, we need a policy to help us out. We're going through symptoms. We're working later than we've ever That's worked right. before in the yes. workplace. 50 plus women take over the workplace in some places. So they need to like, they need to like write some policies for yeah. us, like yes. going through it. And it's happening. Okay, so I want to ask you for women who are in their 40s, you, yes. you, you're experiencing hair loss, the brain fog, gaining weight, mm -hmm. all, that's really scary because you're it not is. sure what, what's happening. So do you have any advice for women who are going through perimenopause? Yeah, it's really not a word that we'd ever talked about. I hadn't heard of it before I was actually going through it. Me you neither. can be in perimenopause up to 10 years before oh you hit. I know. Oh my gosh. Uh, sorry, mm. but you you really can. <laughs> but you know you've got to be op be able to be open about this with okay. your doctor because there are things you can do. You can consider hormone therapy, which is something that some doctors are not comfortable talking about. So right. you have to find one that's comfortable talking about hormone therapy. There are different supplements that you can take to just kind of help out a little bit. Okay. You've got to be able to have that open conversation. Another thing that you do is you work out. Strength training is a big deal. Yeah. When it comes to perimenopause and helping you feel a little bit better. So the working out. A big deal. You think I should tell Lenny Kravitz to get my medication before he comes? <laughs> like all my hormone medication? Tell him to pick, pick up a patch on the way. Oh, gosh, girl, it's just so much. I'm hot flashing right now. It's just so much. <laughs> Tamson, I'm so glad you're here because I get to talk real with you about menopause. Thank Always. you so much. Y'all, for more info on what we discussed today and more, go to SherryShowTV.com and we will be right back. Turn up the air. Turn it up. <laughs> We'll be right back. All right, it's time to play Celebrity Face Race. Our players are David from Tennessee and Diana from Florida. Okay, so David and Diana, your puzzle pieces are scattered in the audience. Now, you only need four pieces to complete the puzzle. So here are your clues. He's hosting the Oscars this year. He shares a first name with another late night host. We're gonna put 60 seconds on the clock. Are you guys ready? Yes. Ready. Go! All right. Oh. Okay, come on. All right, Diana, where you going? You better look. Come on, Diana. All right, Diana's got it on there. All right, David, where you going? Oh, boy, y'all. Oh! All right, it's all right. It didn't stop David at all. Come on, Diana. All right, uh oh. You better go. Oh! All right, come on. We're going back. Who about the way, fellas? Okay, all right, we got it. Ding, ding. Y'all 
y'all two was the most physical players we ever had. <laughs> Diane, I'm sorry, girl, even though you knocked them all out the way, but David wins. So today's face is Jimmy Kimmel. And David, you have won two tickets to MJ the Musical. Oh! Broadway's oh, award-winning oh, musical oh, about the greatest entertainer of all time. David Teddy taking Diana. I got a love connection. We'll be right back, y'all. We'll be right back. It's Black History Month, and today we celebrate model and lifestyle guru, Barbara B. Elaine Smith. Now, Barbara began her journey as a model, gracing 15 magazine covers, including becoming the second African-American woman featured in Mademoiselle. For nearly a decade, she hosted the nationally syndicated television show, B. Smith with Style. She also made an impact in the culinary world, writing cookbooks and running restaurants. Her home collection became the first line from an African-American woman to be sold at a nationwide retailer. And in 2012, she was inducted into the American Chef Corps and worked to raise awareness about Alzheimer's disease after being diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's in 2013. We lost B. Smith in 2020, but her legacy continues to inspire generations. We honor you, Barbara B. Elaine Smith. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Y'all, check out my comedy show in Hoover, Alabama, April 5th and 6th, and at the Baltimore Comedy Factory in Maryland on April 12th and 13th. For more tickets, for more info, go and tickets, go to SherryShowTV.com. I'm gonna start coughing. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sherry, we'll be right back. Tomorrow is the finale of my Funny Over 50 contest. The finalists will compete for my all-star panel of judges, Judy Gold, Rolanda Watts, and Kim Whitley. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye-bye. <laughs>